All right, so I have some quail eggs incubating and they've been incubating since two Saturdays ago. So today's day 14. So technically they're supposed to go on lockdown. Hey Ruby, I'm not trying to make a video over here, thank you. They should be technically going on lockdown today. So I have them in this incubator behind me. This is a Nurture Right 360 or Nurture Bright, what's it called? Nurture Right 360. And so I'll show it to you here to close up in a little bit, but this is made for chicken eggs. It has an automatic egg turner, has a digital thermometer, also has a candling light, a lot of cool features. And a lot of people say they had a good, lot of good success with this uh, incubator. So this is my first time incubating eggs. So we're gonna see how it all turns out. <coughs> all right, now that the dog has a quail egg and she's not gonna bark anymore, um, let's uh, look at this a little bit closer. And so like I said, I've never hatched any birds at all ever before. And so this is completely new for me. And I'm hoping that it all goes nice and smooth. So I have this um, incubator here beside the refrigerator, kind of out of sunlight. And um, I like how I can see in and see everything. Has an automatic egg turner, which will turn the eggs three times a day. I can also manually do it by pressing those buttons. As you can see, um, like these two here, they're not turning. So this is made for chickens. And you put one egg per slot. Well, I have two and you can see these are turning just fine. But every now and then they get stuck and they have to turn. So every few hours I come and just turn it manually and just to check to see what hasn't turned and I'll turn those eggs individually so they don't get stuck. Um, like the yolk sack wouldn't get stuck. So I kind of forgot about that for the first couple of days. So hopefully it's not too many, I like got stuck and then didn't develop. But I think it should be all right. But uh, here we have our humidity control, water spouts uh, where you can put the water in. And then up here, there's a button for like the candling. I haven't used that because candling quail eggs is not easy. And then uh, it shows me how many days left. I have three days left. So today's lockdown day. So I should be getting birds, you know, could get some tomorrow. That'd be actually kind of early, but most likely Monday or Tuesday we'll have birds. And then I can actually take this lid off and take away this turner. And that way the eggs can just sit in there. And so uh, this is my first time incubating. So I just incubated all naturally. I didn't spray them off with Listerine or anything to try to kill bacteria. Um, really, they weren't very dirty at all. And ones that were really soiled, I didn't put them in here. So, but if they had like a little sand or dust on them, I just dusted them off and put them in here. Um, I didn't rinse any of them off with any water. So trying to do this all natural, not spray it with Listerine or anything. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see how it goes. So we will follow back up whenever we first see birds hatching. You can see it moving just a little bit. All right, so we have a couple quail hatched out. Some are counted just about 14. Um, and there's like, I can't, I can't remember how many eggs I put in there. It was like 30 some. Uh, but we have 14 or 15 that are hatched out. Some of them have been in there for probably, I don't know, close to maybe 18, 20 hours. So a pause should get them out. Um, you're not supposed to open it too much because you might shrink wrap some eggs, but the humidity is pretty high in there right now, higher than it should be. So it should be all right if we open it quick and get some out. But uh, they're really crowding up and knocking other eggs around. And so they're getting anxious to get out of there. So we're gonna see if we can do this somewhat successfully. So it is now the next day. Um, so this is what, Wednesday? and they started hatching not last night which would be tuesday night but they started hatching monday night i think i have all my time did they start hatching i don't know i think they started hatching monday night uh, but i have moved some out to the brooder so we have one two three four and then there's one that's in the middle of hatching right now five and then i know that there's these two right here um these two are pipping and zipping and uh, this one here I was afraid maybe he was getting shrink wrapped, um, but I don't think he is. So I just peeled some of the shell off to help him out a little bit. Um, but he, there was a little blood around where he was pep, uh, picking. So up there he just came out. That one there, look at him. Oh, he's so disoriented. Get me out of here. But um, so, so far, a pretty good hatch rate. I'm over 50%. So he's dragging his egg around, still stuck to him. But they're so funny. Uh, so let's head out to the brooder real quick. And we'll see what we got going out there. All right, so we're out here in the shed where I'm brooding all the quail. You can kind of see their brooder with the light set up. Um, I have the light at different screws. That way I can move it easily throughout the day. And that also prevents it from making sure it doesn't fall on top of the quail. But as you can hear them, I have them all in this box because I just cleaned out their brooder. And uh, there's a lot of baby quail in here, you guys. Um, 27 to be uh, 
completely accurate. So 27 baby quail, they're all pretty healthy. Um, I don't think there's really, I don't see any splay legs in really any of them. And so now we're gonna put them back into the brooder box and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about my first hatching experience and uh, how it went. I just can't get over how small these guys are. Like they're so small and tiny. Like it's just crazy that they come out of that little egg. Uh, I did have one that hatched and it did not make it because it looks like he might have had like a herniated, um, uh, oh my gosh, what do you call it? Oh, I'm bringing your brothers and sisters. Um, part of his insides looked like they were kind of still out. Uh, herniated umbilical cord is, is what I think it's called. So um, he did not make it. I had to uh, humanely euthanize him, which I really wasn't thrilled about. But that's part of having animals, um, especially like livestock animals. You have to be ready to make that call um, if you need to. And I put you in there and the first thing you do is poop. Absolutely ridiculous. That's all these guys do is poop. Poop and eat. Um, you have to be ready to make that call if you want to have any kind of animal like this. Um, especially, you know, if you're raising for meat birds, you definitely have to be ready for that. But um, I had I haven't finished incubating. I mean, I am pretty much finished. I think I'm gonna call the hatch this morning. Uh, I think I have like six or seven eggs in there that did not hatch. Um, one was pipped. I don't think he got shrink wrapped. I uh, I'm not sure what happened to him. I'm gonna try to find out. So I have the 27 that hatched good. I had the one that hatched. Then I had to euthanize. And then I had um, one that did not hatch. Uh, he pipped, but he was like that for a while, so I tried to open him up, and he wasn't alive. And it looks like part of his insides were also not um, inside of him, so I don't know if he also had uh, herniated... Um, oh my gosh, what's it called? I can't think and put quail in at the same time. Uh, herniated umbilical cord, so I'm not sure, but uh, I think that might be what happened to him as well. So i got to go through the rest of the eggs. Uh, it's not going to be pretty. I'm not going to do it on camera, because I don't think we need to right now. But I'm going to go through and see, you know, if I had fertile eggs. Um, I'm on a camera. See if I had fertile eggs, if they weren't fertile. I'm hoping that a lot of them weren't fertile because that means my hatch rate is pretty good. Literally, literally as soon as I put them in there, clean their pen or their brooder. As soon as they get put in there, they start pooping. You guys make a lot of hard work for me. Here, let's eat. Breakfast time. I don't know how much to give them. It's hard to keep track of what they eat and what they waste, but I figure it's just better to give them more than what they need. It's not that expensive, feed-wise. All right, so to give you some results from my first hatch. So something interesting happened. Uh, I called the hatch yesterday, and I just wanted to check all the eggs to see what the situation was, and um, I had, yeah, something interesting happened for sure. So I had 38 eggs total. And I had 27 that hatched out by themselves. And then I had three that were not fertile. And then I had three that had some progress, but they stopped developing early on, so I'm not sure what happened there. And then I had three that looks like they developed the whole way, but they might have had a herniated, um, oh my gosh, umbilical cord. That's at least what it looked like. I searched some stuff up. It just kind of like their insides never actually form inside of them like they were supposed to. Um, and then I actually had one that hatched that uh, that didn't hatch. I was checking the eggs and I popped the egg open and he just kicked their shell open and he was ready to hatch. But the egg had no pips. It had no movement. I just assumed all the eggs were done. And so if I would have let it go on for maybe another 12 hours, maybe he would have hatched. But um, he wasn't pipping or anything, and his umbilical cord, the yolk, was all dried up inside. So I don't know if it was... The, the egg was pretty small, so I'm not sure if he was uh, stuck in there or not. So I had 28, uh, 28 healthy birds out of 38 eggs. So that's like roughly 73% hatch rate. Um, now, if you take away the non-fertile eggs, uh, that hatch rate's a little bit better. So it would be 38 minus 3, 35, 28 divided by 35... That's an 80% hatch rate. That's pretty good for me for the first time ever doing this and using the Nurture Right 360 incubator. And so I really like that incubator. Um, if you want to check it out, it's sold in Tractor Supply. I think it's pretty much the only place it's sold. You might be able to find it online. It was about 130 bucks. Um, I think my humidity might have been a little bit too high because a lot of people said if it's too high for quail, you can drown the embryo, which might have been what happened for a couple of those. Uh, but it's hard to say. I'm not an expert. Um, 
but everybody's doing good and uh yeah let's bring you guys in a little bit closer look so everybody's doing pretty good this morning um no issues uh the one that i broke out of a show uh last night i have no idea which one it is because it's probably one of these smaller ones maybe this one um i have i really have no idea but um they all look like they're pretty healthy yeah, he's a little smaller than the other ones but um, he wasn't very happy being in the incubator by himself drying off but everybody's doing good they all know figuring out where the water is uh, they're pooping all the time <laughs> they're eating and uh they're just doing pretty good i don't think i have any splay leg issues and i did not put anything down in that incubator uh, i thought about putting one of those mats down that for like inside uh, drawers so your um, utensils and stuff don't slide around but i didn't i want to see how it worked this time but i'm looking at these birds and i don't think any of them have splay legs so i know that can sometimes be an issue if they have like a low traction service they're hatching on they can't get their footing and they develop that but these didn't seem to develop that at all so uh, I'm pretty happy with the results. And so I will be trying this again. I will be using the same incubator. Um, if you guys want to check it out, I'll like I said, I'll link it in the description below. I don't get any kickback or anything from Lincoln Attractor Supply. Uh, but I just really like the incubator. It was nice to use. The only thing I didn't like is that whenever you go to open it up to remove birds, there's no wall to prevent the birds just from pouring out. Because I lifted the lid a little bit and some of them just come running straight out. Um, I had it on a counter, so they just kind of plopped on the counter. But that's one thing. I wish they would have built the walls a little higher and then put the lid on top of the wall. Um, that would be my recommendation. Uh, that's the only thing I really didn't like about it. Um, but other than that, I love being able to see the eggs easily. The temperature gauge seemed to work very well. I didn't have a backup thermometer in it. And the humidity seemed to work pretty well. Um, I did have some trouble at the end getting my humidity down below 70%. It was like 70, 75 um, for the past like two days of hatching which is a little high but overall i'm really happy with it really glad um to how it worked and uh yeah oh you guys got scared about something and so that's going to wrap up this video i just wanted to feature a video with the nurture right 360 show you guys some of my hatching progress or process and uh yeah and so lots more videos probably to come with these baby quail also with these baby chickens that are back here somewhere you probably can't see them because they're underneath oh they're eating they're still a little bit skittish. We need to spend some more time with them. But yeah, lots of videos to come. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, hit that thumbs up button. Also subscribe for more videos from us. Making videos about the homestead, growing your own food, raising animals, raising, uh, training your pets, all kinds of stuff. And so thank you guys again for watching. And we'll see you guys in the next video.